Now how about part two? A complete neutralization. I'm adding 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide. I know that this is exact amounts. This is my VEQ and a complete neutralization. How do I calculate the pH of my equivalence point? We have been talking about this for a few times. It's just that we haven't actually really have a question to try to calculate the equivalence point. So uh, finally, we are able to do that. So same thing, let us determine the resultant solution using the ice table. Maybe this is a little bit redundant because you notice there's a lot of cancellation at the end of it all. You don't have any acid, don't have any base. You're only left with the salt. So if you don't want to do by ice table method, I think it is fine. But you notice again my preference uh, uh, in terms of the method for me to answer questions is as long as it is an acid-base reaction, I like to use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. I don't really care whether the resultant solution is is it an excess weak acid or excess strong base or equal amount of my acid or base, it doesn't matter. I just use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. I see what is the resultant solution, then the resultant solution will be one of the five solutions that we've talked about. I will worry about the pH of the resultant solution later. So I think it is easier for me to always use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. It will also be easier for students huh? because the starting part is always the same. If there's an acid-base reaction, let me settle the reaction first. Then I see what do I end up with. Then which of these five solutions this guy is. Then the method for me to calculate the pH of the solution will come up. So the ice table, I think it is straightforward. I don't have any more acid, no more base. I'm only left with the salt. So remember earlier we've mentioned, right? Equivalence point is nothing more than a salt solution. So the concept involving salt hydrolysis will come up. And this salt, we know that Na plus it is neutral because it comes from sodium hydroxide. I know that this CH3, COO minus, it is a conjugate base because it comes from a weak acid. Weak acid will give me weak conjugate base. So this salt is nothing more than a conjugate base. If it is a conjugate base, obviously, you give me OH minus in solution and the solution will be alkaline. All right. So if the question asks us for explanation, sometimes they do that. They'll tell you that, well, the equivalence point now for this acid-base reaction between a weak acid strong base, the equivalence point is alkaline or maybe pH 9. So can you explain why this is the case? So the explanation will be here. I know that the resultant solution will be this salt, but more specifically, I'm focusing on the conjugate base, CH3CO minus. I know that Na plus is useless. Huh? Na plus is neutral. We can ignore that. CH3CO minus, it is a conjugate base of a weak acid. So therefore, you give me OH minus in solution. pH will be above 7. If I want to write out an equation to show the dissociation, remember, my conjugate base, it is just a weak base. This will be a partial dissociation. So you keep this in mind. Huh? The equivalence point for this acid-base reaction is nothing more than a salt, nothing more than a conjugate base, nothing more than a weak base. So if I want to do by calculation, how do I calculate the equivalence point? There's no separate formula for me to find the pH of my equivalence point. No separate formula for me to find the pH of my salt. No separate formula for me to find the pH of a conjugate base. This formula it is for me to find the pH of a weak base. So equivalence point will roll back to weak base. All right. So I'll use this formula. OH minus concentration is the square root of KB times weak base concentration. And then we find things to substitute. I don't have KB value, no problem, eh? because I'm given the KA of the partner. So I can always use KW divided by KA. I can work out the KB value. KW is 10 to the power of minus 14. All right. KA, it is given in the exercise, 10 to the power of minus 5. So KB will be 10 to the power of minus 9. Again, a very nice number. But if you're given actual values, we will do by the same number of steps, exactly the same. So usually shouldn't be that much of a problem for us to find KB. It's quite instinctive. Eh? We are not given KB, but the KA of the partner is given. Instinctively, we know how to do the conversion. I think potentially in terms of careless mistake, uh, what we have to keep in mind is the concentration of the weak base or the concentration of my CH3 COO minus. The number of mole, I can get it from the ice table, 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3. What we have to keep in mind is make sure we divide by the total volume because I have 25 cm cube of my analyte. I add 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide to reach complete neutralization. So therefore, the total volume is actually 50 cm cube. Please make sure 
that you take that into consideration. Uh, make sure you divide by the correct total volume. And uh, again, potentially, we might make this careless mistake. And this mistake is actually under more concept. It is a stoichio mistake. It is not a concept in terms of ionic equilibria. So we have to be a bit careful in terms of that. So I can work out the concentration for my ethanol 0.05 mole per dmq. I can sub back into this equation. The formula for me to find the pH of a weak base. OH minus concentration. I can get this. Huh? 7.071 times 10 to the power minus 6. I can find POH. I can find pH. All right. So uh, formally, this is how we calculate the pH of my equivalence point. But again, if you look at the working, we just need to use the concept and we link the equivalence point to a salt, link the salt to a conjugate base, link the conjugate base to a weak base. I'm just using the formula of a weak base to find the pH of this equivalence point. So please keep this in mind. Everything will link back to one of these five solutions that we keep on emphasizing. We need this reinforcement. Huh? Everything can be linked back to one of these five solutions.